um, it, with, with um, a, a freedom that flows where it wants to flow, it locks into a program. Certain age, you do certain things. Then you go to school, and nice teachers, and then professors, and people in university, they tell you what life is, what facts are, everything, what you are, and all the rest of it, and all the latest scientific knowledge, and all this stuff. And then you get married, and you have a family, and you get your kids, and they grow up, and they go through the same system, and you keep getting old, and, and now you, you're, you've been battling all your life, competing with everyone else, because you've got to compete. We can't cooperate, we've got to compete. I want that big job, and if I don't get it, if I... Uh, And then you go around and you reach a point where you just hope that there is some God out there that's going to be kind to you because that you have been told you could go to hell and give it some of that, you see. I've just described life for vast, vast numbers of people. I mean, can we really not do better than that? Is that all we really are? But what does that serve? What does that sequence I've just described serve? It serves the system that treats us as mere pawns within it, mere cogs within its machine. And therefore we serve that which controls the machine. It's not because that's how it has to be, it's because that's how it's been manipulated to be. As I saw these pictures on the internet. There are people um, running in water to get fit, you know. And of course the water's coming. Got to keep the water from coming up, you know, got to pay the mortgage at the end of the month. Got to keep running, can't stop, bloody hell. You see the bills, bloody hell. And it's interesting, they're looking at the telly, because most of, most of us are doing this all the time, aren't we? Exactly that, we call it life. And it's like a bloody software disk. Just running through its program. Not just a program for one person, but program for vast, vast numbers of people. It's a computer game. As we get through this first section today, uh, we might see it is a computer game. And what's happening is we're being hypnotized all the time through education and media and religion and all this stuff so that we don't see what this really is. So we don't see how the dots connect and therefore what we're really experiencing. It's a mind game, like I said right at the start. If you don't control people's minds, you can't control their behavior and uh, their perception. You can't keep them in this state if you don't control their minds. And so we have these prisons of the mind, religion. Here's some rules and regulations. We call it a religion, but they're rules and regulations. And if you don't keep to them, then you're not in that religion anymore. You're a blasphemer. And here's some politics. If, if, you, if, you're, if you say that, you're not a socialist. If you say that, you're not a democrat. You're not a conservative. Rules and regulations. I have to conform to them or I'm not one of them. Thank you, God. Race. Oh, you, you're a traitor to your race. Why? I'm just doing the just thing in this situation. Okay, he's from a different race from me, but in the just situation here, He's right. He can't be. He's not the same race as me. He must be wrong. Races played off against each other. Divide and rule. Keep the multitude in constant conflict. And then you can play the violin for them all. And then the big one. The biggest one of all. Because they're just expressions of that. Keep them in false self-identity. Keep them in belief. As Mark Twain said, in religion and politics, people's beliefs and convictions are in almost every case gotten at second hand and without examination from authorities who have not themselves examined the questions at issue but have taken them at second hand from other non-examiners whose opinions about them were not worth a brass farthing. I, he has just described how the norms are created. Repeating, re repetition. 
Not truth, not fact, not questioning, not investigation, but beliefs that come purely from repetition. Those, those emissions out of your exhaust are killing the planet because they're causing global warming. No, they're not. No, they're not. I'm not saying they're a good thing. Don't want to breathe them in, although um, it's been massively overplayed, but do they cause global warming? No. But it's the norm, belief that it does. Why? Repetition. And then with this is, to keep us in this state of believing the unbelievable, we, we go into this state it's fascinating when I came across this, when I then looked at the world every day from this perspective. It's called cognitive dissonance. And what it is, for people who haven't come across it, when you believe something and you come across information or an experience which is at odds with the belief, you actually go into a, an emotional state. The, uh, it's, a, it's a disharmonious vibrational emotional state because you can't square your belief with your experience or the information you've come across. Now, this can be a good thing because if you say, as a result of this unease, I'm going to look again at my belief in the light of that, then you can move forward and you can say, hey, I'm, I'm changing my belief here because that's obviously challenging the one I had before. But no, what most people do, this happens so much in religion and politics and stuff, is to, to, to get rid of this, they have to explain that away while still retaining this. Like, we're going to war because we want peace. That's how you do it. Cognitive dissonance. Lying to yourself making unbelievable lies to yourself to preserve your belief. That's how it continues. If we were honest with ourselves, beliefs would evolve in the light of new information. Another way of putting this was George Orwell's doublethink in his book 1984. Doublethink means the power of holding two contradictory beliefs in one's mind simultaneously and accepting both of them. That's another uh, more extended version of cognitive dissonance, where you can so convince yourself that two opposites are true that you don't actually even have to go into the unease. And of course, these are great cognitive dissonance lines. War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. And vast numbers of people on this planet believe those things. By taking our freedoms away, we protect our liberties. That's another good one. But when you, when you start to connect the dots, the bewildered map and maze starts to become clearer. Just press that back. Doctors destroy health. Why? Because doctors are not there, some individuals may be, but the profession as a whole, the industry is not there primarily to um, heal people. It's there to serve the diktats and the agenda of the transnational pharmaceutical cartel and those families that control it. Because cartels are not capitalism, they're cartels, they work as one unit. And you don't want a healthy population, therefore one that can think straight and sharply if you want to control them. You don't want that at all. It's about wealth, not health, the medical industry. It's about serving Big Pharma, the pharmaceutical cartel. Lawyers destroy justice. Of course they do. Laws are not there to protect the people overwhelmingly. They're there to impose the will of the system upon the people and keep them in line. So you have to um, have a, a legal profession that serves that system primarily with some honourable exceptions and therefore justice is not what it's about. It's just about serving the system and arguing black is white in a courtroom. Universities destroy knowledge. If you're a few people, a, a network of families, and you want to control the entire population, my goodness, do you want uh, people um, uh, being told things they really need to know through their formative years so they can suss what's going on? No way. 
You want people to believe a version of reality that suits your agenda. So that's what they get overwhelmingly in education or what passes for it, with honourable exceptions, individually. You know, if you, if you were sitting around a table and you're thinking, how do we get people to see the world the way we want them to see it, that suits us? And somebody might say, you know, the, I don't know whether they'll accept this, but the best thing we can do is take children from the earliest age and have control of their minds from uh, four or five right through their formative years, right into their teenage years, five days a week, maybe more, to tell them what we want them to believe. But that's what we've got, it's called the education system. Education, I think it's about time we had some. Instead, we are given the system's version of reality, filled with all this fake history, fake political science, fake versions of scientific reality. And more and more, it's places like America, it's dumb them down, dumb them down. As one great American co comedian said, all you need now is a, virtually is a bloody pencil. You got a pencil? Okay, get in there, it's physics. They don't want educated, sharp people, that's the point. And it happens all over the world. We're educating them, no, you're indoctrinating them. And now we've got young people in the, in the, the formative years when they should be happy and relaxed and enjoying life. <laughs> Am I going to pass my exams? Will I get an A? Will I get an A star? Will I get a B? Oh my God, my whole future depends on it. Oh my God. Will I be indoctrinated enough to pass? We ever talk in school about being happy? I don't know. We don't do much in England. What about being happy? What about being fulfilled? What about being at peace with self? What about questioning and coming to your own conclusions? Does that ever come? No, no. Got to, got to follow the curriculum. If you don't follow the curriculum, you don't pass the exams, and oh, your life's over. Governments destroy freedom. This is a big, big thing for people to understand who are new to any of this. Governments are not there to serve the people. <laughs> I know it's obvious to people here, but sometimes you have to sometimes you have to make it clear. Governments are there to impose the will of the agenda of these families onto the people. And the people that do it are usually men in dark suits, overwhelmingly. Men in dark suits. It's funny, every time someone comes on in authority, they're in a dark suit. I love it. Um, and they come from certain bloodlines. This is George Bush's, apparently. Apparently, he's, he's, um, his line is about to evolve at some point. I don't know when. This was a, this was a head scan he had. Um, now... Let's think about this. 300 million people in America. I know they say anyone can become president in America. It's a nonsense, but I know they say that. But clearly, you do not have to be um, uh, mentally sharp to become president. All you need is the money and the backing of those who decide the presidency. I mean, this is the uh, one George Bush line. I could have picked hundreds. Our enemies are innovative and resourceful, and so are we. They never stop thinking about new ways to harm our country and our people, and neither do we. Now, this, this man was President of the United States, please God tell me it's not true, for eight bloody years. And a few people don't control the world, please. And now, hey, Superman's arrived. Superman, the Buddha, Jesus. And anyone, you, any name you want to put to him, Mr. Fake Obama, who has scammed the American collective psyche on a scale that beggars belief, though many, many people are starting to see uh, the truth of that as we see him in action. But despite Mr. Change Obama, and I'll get into him big time in the second half, um, we have still 